you're looking for the best and biggest ship in Los Angeles, then look no further than the Norwegian Bliss. You won't go hungry. She's got 18 dining venues on board. You won't be bored. She has a go-kart track, Broadway shows, water slides, everything you'd want for a great cruise ship. When she's not in Alaska, she's here in Los Angeles doing Mexican Riviera cruises, but today we're doing something special. We're doing something completely different. We're going on a 15-day Panama Canal cruise. So the first half will be like a Mexican Riviera, but then we just go on and go further until we end in Miami. Let's get aboard. First objective is to make it aboard. It's currently 11.38. Let's see how long it takes us to get through all of that. Oh gosh. The beauty of checking in the region is you actually get your room key before you board. So it's not like one of those where you find it at the room. By the way, I'm joined by my uncle Brian, who actually is the reason why we're here. It was his cruise and last minute he was able to add me on. So thank you so much. But it only took us about 20 minutes to get checked in. And now we're finally ready to board. Welcome aboard the Norwegian Bliss. Already getting thrown to our muster stations, which is the e-muster, so we automatically have to report there. Like, seriously, you get on and there's signs pointing every which way. We're G6, so we're gonna find that hopefully pretty quickly. Also, red lifeboats. That's cool. Hi. G6? Assembly station G1, the Cablos Lobos restaurant. Thank you. For those of you new, a muster station is basically a safety assembly drill. So when, in case of emergency, you need to know where you need to go, so that's what they're making us do, is figure out where to go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Then the additional part of it is we have to watch the video in our stateroom, but now we're heading up to the buffet, Uncle's taking the elevator, and I'm already starting off the cruise right by taking stairs only, 15 days. We gotta stay active just a little bit. Oh man, why did I decide to take stairs? Anyways, new year, new me. Why? <sighs> Made it. We found the gem. Forget where that is, because we're never coming back. We're going for Garden Cafe. I will say, first impressions of the ship, it actually looks very, very nice. Like, it doesn't look outdated. I know it's a newer ship, but still, it everything feels feels very nice. Some cruises you go on, you're like, eh, it's a little cheap, a little outdated, but this one, very nice so far. I mean, we've only been on for, what, five minutes? Welcome to Garden Cafe. We are with other people, so we will try and find them. They're supposedly already here. We found the crew. We'll introduce everyone. There's 15 days for you to get to know everybody eventually. A few familiar faces and some new faces. It was really crowded as we came in. It was really hard to find a seat, but the servers that are walking around saw us waiting and just chatting with, with our friends and family. And they said, oh, there's a table open for you. And they held the table for us, waved us down, brought us over, and then we sat at an open table. I don't think I've ever seen that, ever. I've walked around countless amount of times on, on Royal, on Carnival, and chairs have been filled, and crew members will just kind of look at you and brush you off, but on this ship, maybe within five minutes, they were like, you need a seat, we'll help you get one. I think it's a sign of things to come. This is gonna be a really great 15 days if the service is like this already, but, what I do want to mention is the food. There's a lot of great options. I didn't get much. I didn't get certainly anything that is healthy. And everyone who knows me knows that I'm not going to the gym. But everyone always says cruise calories don't count. They do. I just don't know how to do math. So we'll just go with that. But the fact that they had sirloin and it didn't look like it was burnt to death is a good sign, at least to me. I mean, some people like their meat that way. I mean, if you like it wrong, then, you know, it's to each their own, but sirloin, chicken tender, and fries. What a great start to a cruise. On the other hand, look at what Uncle got. Pasta, bratwurst, sirloin, and something else fried? This is the onions. Onion, fried onion, oh, good. Any good? For lunch, it's very good. Bratwurst is good. The onions, really good. Pasta, for now. Alrighty, post lunch, I haven't talked since lunch, we have pretty much been setting up Wi-Fi for everyone's devices, because there's eight of us, and then we've also been setting up the chat messages, which by the way, Norwegian Cruise Line charges you $10, $9.75 a person, or per device, to message and call each other. Though we're finding it's not the greatest. As we go on further, we'll find out really how it goes. We got 15 days to figure it out, but so far, not a good sign. Then the second thing is, is we had to figure out our dining reservations. So Norwegian Cruise Line is known for the freestyle dining, which is great because you can kind of book reservations and go wherever you want, whenever you want. You don't have to make reservations, you could just show up. We did make reservations, but we made reservations across multiple different cabins and you could see where that goes. So we're swapping back and forth in everyone's cabins to try to get everyone's reservations aligned. So after a whole nightmare, 
we finally got it through. So we have five different specialty restaurants all throughout the cruise. And I am so just mind numb from having all this thinking and figuring all this stuff out with the app, with the reservations. It's a lot. That's the reality of day one, is that we waste three hours on just trying to get everyone together because it's not as streamlined as it would be. So lesson to you, come prepared, make the reservations early in advance, and do it all under one person so that way it's just much smoother. So one person can make reservations for the entire group, and that's just the best way to go about it. Thankfully, in the teppanyaki room, they were able to, were able to talk to a hostess, and she helped clear everything out, and everything's smooth. So seriously, for the next 15 days, every, all our dining is, is just, it's done, we're good. First day headache, but rest of the day easy. Rest of the cruise easy. Meanwhile, like, the four of us are trying to figure it out. These two yahoos have just been sitting here doing who knows what. Enjoying our lives. So we finally made it to the atrium and just a look. This is where Shore Excursion is. This is where Guest Service is. Cruise Next is over there. There's a Starbucks. There's an Uncle Brian. They're selling stuff over there. Internet cafe, bar, it's a pretty tight squeeze here. Not the largest atrium in the world. So I thought we were done with things, but we're gonna go figure out internet now because we're having problems with internet. The thing is, is you get 300 minutes for free and we paid for the uh, $10 chat feature and apparently you're not allowed to use it unless you're on the 300 minutes and then what happens after the 300 minutes? Uh, one fun thing after another, but the ship itself has been pretty cool to explore. Not that we've explored much of it, just all the lines and things. Yeah, so next line is we're waiting in the internet cafe. Oh, it's the safety spiel now. Can't fix my phone. Yeah, you can fix it. We're still here. It's 3 30. Checking up my phone. We finally got it sorted, and now it's time to go to the sailway party. Finally, the first thing we're doing on this cruise that is not technical. I'm excited. I'm just happy to be aboard. I mean, 15 days. We don't need to have the whole day to fun. We need something to do tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that. You get the point. 16. Welcome back up to the sky deck. We haven't been up here yet. We haven't done much exploring, so I'm excited, but first, sail away. The party actually just technically started right now, so we don't think we're going to find a spot. We found our spot. Way back up. Alrighty, well the, the sail away party is cool and all, but uh, we haven't explored very much, so we're just gonna jump to that. And also, I think we started moving. We did start moving, so gotta get up high. Region Bliss Speedway. I, I don't know if they're running right now, but we will be running this later in the cruise. Stay tuned. And then right above the go kart track, you will find mini golf. Which, uh, it's kind of actually very mini. Huh, they do have clubs, they do have balls, and the course is definitely snuck right up here on top. It's like a new little secret private spot where not very many people are up, except for us and the family. We just get to watch sail away from here. As we leave, we get a beautiful view back here. This is usually the part of the video where we always look at Los Angeles and say we'll see you real soon in a few days, in a week, or whatever, but literally on this cruise, and it's mind-blowing to me, we will not see Los Angeles again in this series. I mean, yeah, we'll see Los Angeles again real soon because this is my home port, this is where I live. Next stop is Miami in two weeks, which is so far away. I usually always try to exaggerate the ports, like, ah, oh, you know, three nights, four nights, that's such a long cruise, but it is literally a long cruise this time. This is not exaggeration. This is legitimately what we're doing. By the way, this is Ian. I've just been talking to him and just freaking out. I, my mind cannot wrap around the idea that we are not coming home to Los Angeles. I've done Navigator, I've done Princess, I've done so many different ships out of this port, even in Long Beach. We see this port all the time and we won't see it again on this sailing. I just. It's just so weird. Well, and we're going past a 
Wonder of the World, right? And we're going past like, the Wonder World. We're that, doing that one's, that one's pretty cool. I am so happy to be aboard. I am so grateful that we're aboard here. It is going to be an amazing cruise. If you stick around all 15 days, I don't think you'll be sorry. We have a lot planned for it. There's so much exciting things. I'm going to force Ian to do things. I'm forcing you down that slide. <laughs> that, that, that slide is terrifying. That, that's kind of an interesting slide. That's enough of me ranting. <laughs> Ceremonial, Los Angeles. We will see you in a long time, not even real soon. So we have come from that side. That's where the mini golf is, the smokestack. And we've come to the Ford to go see something. I don't know what. I'm just following Ian around. He's, he's my guide. He had a chance to explore while I was trying to fix everyone's problems. So they do have a laser tag as we are coming up. Whoa, they actually have a map and everything for the laser tag. We'll have to do this at one point. Yeah, exactly. And then here is a Vibe Beach Club, which is, I think you have to pay for it. I don't know what it costs. We'll find out at some point in the cruise and maybe we'll do it. We have 15 days on this cruise, so we have enough time to try everything. But what I did want to mention, along with the Vibe Club, the, uh, the laser tag and the go-karts do cost additional money. They don't give you any benefits of being on a Panama Canal cruise. So I imagine that both of those things are going to be running quite empty for a lot of the time. So we'll try and get it in when we can, hopefully when it's busier. But we'll see. Hopefully we, we will definitely do it. I just don't know what the experience is going to be like. I imagine that if you went on a regular seven night cruise, like during the summer with kids, uh, you're going to experience longer wait times and actually have queues for things. But I don't think we're going to we'll have see. queues. Yeah. It just doesn't. It do the demographic, because it's a longer cruise, well, look, is just a little out. slower. That was full before. Oh yeah. So it emptied out. So as soon as the party ended, everyone left. Like they're all gone. Yeah. So we're heading down. One deck below the oh, yeah. Garden Cafe, which is the buffet, will be the observation deck. Yeah. And we walked into the observation lounge and I immediately got distracted by this beauty. Oh, this ship looks familiar. Have you seen it before? I mean, now I have, but. Oh yeah, before I haven't seen it before this moment. This moment right now, I haven't seen it. We're literally like right here. <laughs> oh yeah. So there's one section that we have no access to and that is the Haven. And that's like that indoor pool area right there that we're not allowed into because we're not sweet class. Haven's a sweet class and we're poor. We'll never see Haven. We might see Vibe. But there's, there's the rest of the ship that we will actually get to see. Hey, wait a second. They have, they have, food. They have drinks and they have little snacks here. What? This was, this was full with like quiche and stuff. They had quiche and bread and stuff. That is so cool. Maybe it's like a more casual spot instead of the buffet, which was really crowded earlier. Here is the main part, the glass in the front. The greatest thing about this is that if you were, say, imagine in Alaska and you wanted a place where you're warm and out of the weather to look out, the observation lounge up on deck 14 is your spot. Deck 15, sorry. I mean, the buffet is right there. You're set. Pull up a chair and camp out. So we're just gonna run back to the rooms before dinner, and I just wanted to mention, look at the little fishies. I'll pause for a second. Look, they're swimming forward, and we are going away from the Ford. So if you're ever lost on Norwegian, and you wanna know if you're going forward or backwards, look at the fish. The fish point forward. Alrighty, welcome to our balcony cabin, which is an accessible cabin. That's why it is much bigger than normal. Of course, you notice uncle was in his scooter earlier. That's why we have an accessible cabin. He did beat me. So that's why there are some things lying around just a little bit, but it's okay. We're going to do a quick 60 second room tour. It is nighttime, so we don't actually get to see out the balcony, but the balcony is much bigger. You'll just have to stay tuned for tomorrow. Don't worry. 60 second room tour starting right now. As always, I'd like to start here in the front for our room tours. Right here, this door you'll notice is actually wider than normal. It's actually also automatic, so if we hit this button, the door will open automatically, but we're not gonna do that here. Makeup room, do not disturb. Switch it on and off, depending on what you want. This room does require a card in here. I do not like that. Power switch right here. Emergency call button in case of emergency, if help will come. Here's where you find your air conditioning. You, if you hate your roommate, then just turn off the light switch on them. Here's the bathroom. There is a shower gel, shampoo, clothesline, of course. This this head does adjust in height. Tray right here. It is also seamless. You can walk right in or roll right in, depending on who you are. Toilet, sink, mirror is angled weird. Towels and stuff like that all over the place. Whoops. Here's your desk. Three drawers over here. Full desk. Three outlets. One international. 
big mirror, tons of closet space, with hangers, two beds, lots more storage, a TV, a fridge, a safe, a balcony that's too dark to see, and time. I think we went over by a few seconds. It's been a while since we've done one of these 60 second room tours. I'm sorry it was not as great, but I do go into a full in-depth thorough room tour in a separate video. So that way if you're really interested in the cabin, but I do it just because I don't want to spend forever on the room tour. I just want to get out and explore and see the rest of the ship. The room is important, but to me, it's only a place that you sleep. Truly, the rest of the ship is what's important. And if you don't agree with me, then that's why there's a different video. So check out that video in case you're interested. But this cabin is definitely a lot bigger than normal. It is a wheelchair accessible because of Uncle Brian. It's, it's basically like a junior suite. It feels so big in here. There's so much space to roam around in. Of course, that's all by design for the wheelchair. So it's different. It's something that we don't normally do. It's something that I definitely can't do in a regular basis, but something that Uncle does need for, you know, for his convenience. I will say Norwegian has actually done a great job at designing this cabin to make it really, really really, really accessible to those that need it. They really thought about it. Some cabins I've been on and seen and they're just not, like they didn't think about anything and it's just kind of barely put together. But this room, really well done. Really good job by Norwegian. I <laughs> Hats off to them. I guess it's time for dinner. Let's go ahead and get on out. Sorry, we'll see the balcony tomorrow morning. You'll just have to pay attention tomorrow. You'll see it, I promise. But until then, dinner time in the Manhattan dining room. There is so much nuance to every room, whether it be a handicap room or whether it be a basic room. Why not have someone there to help you out through every single step? Visit my website, goodmorningadventure.com forward slash book, and I could be your travel agent for your next cruise. You see all the cruises that I go on, so you know that all of your questions will be answered with a wealth of experience. It doesn't have to be the bliss. It doesn't even have to be Norwegian. Any cruise line, any cruise ship, I'm there to help. But let's get back to talking about the Norwegian bliss. Anyways, welcome to Manhattan dining room and there is a huge line thankfully our family's ahead of us because we are late though I saw them walk in I don't exactly know where they are we'll figure it out as we go we made it to dinner welcome to the Manhattan dining room for our first dinner of 15 nights they have a bunch of appetizers on the list and then they have classic entrees which we think will be on the menu every single night and then they have today's featured entrees. Fancy. If you feel a little fancier, you could always pay an upcharge to get Cagney Steakhouse dishes. And they have wine recommendations down below. I have no idea what I'm gonna get, but I'm sure it'll be good. Also, just wanted to address the, uh, the menu cover is kind of cool. I like that, that's really cool. The cool thing on Norwegian is they still do the dessert menus, typically on other cruise lines, on the budget cruise lines at least. They will make you order your appetizer, entree, and dessert all at the same time. So it's kind of cool to get a separate menu for desserts, so not very many options. Uh, they do have coffees for you from Starbucks. Alrighty, just got out of dinner. Uncle, was it really good? Very good. Very good. Just a little cold, but very good tasting. He is the pickiest eater, and he said that this is probably one of the best dining rooms that he's had on any cruise. For sure. Yeah, for sure. He hasn't done Disney yet, though. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> he has Royal, Princess, and Carnival. We're walking into the atrium on the top deck. Wait, this might not be the atrium, but this is just a really cool view. I'm not really sure where we are. There are stores, but... Oh, that's Ocean Blue. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going. Welcome to the Bliss Theater. I think the Beatles are playing or something. in the back kind of forgot to record and bring my camera I'm currently on my phone but look at this beautiful wake have my binoculars just trying to enjoy the few ships over there off in the distance hello it, it, that is the discovery princess one of our most popular series that we've had on this channel we did a four night on her last year in December and she 
it was a lot of fun. It was cool to go on this on Princess. We really don't do Princess, and that was our only experience with her. She's heading back to San Pedro right now, so bye bye, loser. Right over there is Panorama, really far off in the distance too. Like I said, uh, I have the binoculars for a reason, but the panorama, if you are following a particular person, they're on that ship right now. And uh, squish, squish, bye-bye, eat our wake losers. Imagine having to go back to Long Beach, having to imagine having going back to the Port of Los Angeles. Literally could not be us. Literally could not be us. But yeah, I, well, sorry it's on the phone, but I just had to. I mean, I just was, I was just enjoying my time with the binoculars, didn't even think about it. But then I saw both those ships, ships, one ship has a lot of significance. The other ship means absolutely nothing to me. Maybe we'll go on Panorama one day and do it justice the way it deserves to be done on this channel and make a great vlog series, possibly coming soon. But uh, for now, we're just waving bye to all of our California ships because though we're leaving California, we're not ending in California. And that's just, that's so unbelievable. Late night shenanigans and we're gonna put some money on some squares. If you don't know how this works, then I'd really, I'm not here to explain it to you. But if you do, expect big things to happen tomorrow. Not gonna lie though, the uh, casino is quite dead. And they were saying that, they were saying that that's just kind of how it goes on one of these longer cruises. No one's really up late at night. You kind of catch my drift on it. So anyways, we're gonna try going to the club and I'm just curious to see if anyone's even in there. Social club after 11 p.m. is for 18 only. For 18 only, if we can even get to that number in the club. People are having fun, like six of them. I was curious, that's what happens on a 15 night cruise. I imagine on shorter cruises, that's probably really popular, but not on a 15 night. Just not the quite right demographic for it. Welcome to the local bar and grill. Late night eatery place. It's a sit down restaurant and we're gonna try it out. It's a little dark in here, but maybe you can see the menu, I hope. Alrighty, we're done with the night. Just got back from the local bar and grill and that place is open until 3 a.m. and the food was actually pretty good. Really small portions, so you might have to order multiple, but that's okay, unless you're drunk, in which case you probably don't want to order multiple. And the one half portion size is fine. Anyways, Beautiful first day. Tomorrow's gonna be even better, so join us tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. As always, this isn't a goodbye, but just a see ya real soon.